students, no matter where they are. Um, we've since exchanged our name to Stride uh, because we're, we, we've done expanded beyond the K-12 space, though, though that's still very much what we do as a priority. Um, what we've also done with the Stride Professional Development Center is we've leveraged some of our expertise over the past two plus decades of supporting schools and students and educators, teachers, principals. Um, and we are trying to innovate, you know, the way professional development happens for educators. And that we're doing that through the Stride Professional Development Center. Um, gone are the days where, you know, it's face-to-face -face only PD. Um, it's episodic professional development. Um, it's professional development that's not necessarily relevant to what teachers and educators need right away. So the Professional Development Center is designed to solve that challenge with some unique and uh, innovative uh, ways of delivering content. All right, man. Well, listen, we are super excited here at the network to be engaged with you all and helping to provide this opportunity for teachers all across the country, and especially those teachers that are coming from our HBCU backgrounds, because we Absolutely. know that education was always one of the stalwarts of most HBCUs in this country. They all had teaching programs, and that's what a lot of them were founded for. So there, let's talk absolutely. a little bit about those special programs that you guys have for yeah. the teachers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Roy, you hit, you hit on the very important point. Um, you know, right now in our country, we're facing, facing probably one of the greatest challenges, you know, of our teaching core that we have in many, many years. And that, that's around this teacher shortage. You know, a lot of teachers are exiting the profession. Um, um, just just based on tenure, you know, they're they're retiring and moving on, and then you have, you know, our existing teachers who are who are being taxed and stressed, you know, particularly post COVID, with, you know, increasing demands, um, challenges that they're facing in the classroom, and a host of other other uh, issues that, that they struggle with. And um, we need good teachers, and we need to support the teachers that we have. So the two things that we're doing. Um, is that we know first year teachers among all teachers are among the first to leave the profession uh, within the first five years. I think they do um, at, at a 44% rate, which is just scary to think that folks are, you know, graduated, want to go in a classroom and make a difference, but, you know, feel like they need to leave within the first five years because it's so challenging. So we want to support them. Um, obviously, as a new teacher, your school that you 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 work where you work your first year, the district where you work, there will be some professional development support to assist you. But we want to go a step further. We want to help every teacher in the country get off to a strong start uh, to their first year and have some uh, stick to itiveness, you know, to help them get through that first year. So we're offering a year free um, access to the Stride Professional Development Center. It's a ever growing online database of courses that will help them in a variety of different ways. Uh, classroom management, targeted instruction, uh, and, and a host of other things. And the content will continuously grow. Again, it's just another resource that allows them to sharpen their practice, to feel like they're supported, uh, because the research says that teachers are leaving in large part because they don't feel like they get enough professional support. So we really hope that helps new teachers. So again, this is for any new teacher who just graduated in the country. All you have to do is go to our site and uh, sign on using the Teachers Win uh, uh, discount at, at, at checkout. Also, we have a, a, another campaign where during Teacher Appreciate Teacher Appreciation Week, we gifted uh, all teachers in the country, no matter where you are, six months free professional development center access. Uh, but we're doing a special thing with through you, our partnership with the B, BCSN and our, our uh, HBCU graduates, and, and also the schools that you work with. We want any teacher in the country who, 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 you know, through our partnership um, gets access to the Professional Development Center and they get six months free using the BCSN 23 uh, passcode at, at checkout. You know, again, our goal is to support and get as many teachers on the site feeling supported, um, you know, to really help, you know, them, them succeed and have some success, not only for them, but obviously for our kids and the communities they serve, so. Most definitely. And Darren, listen, we are super excited again to be a part of this. My mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. I have my my best friend is a teacher. Absolutely. So we understand. I've worked in the school system for years. So I understand the resources that are needed. I understand why a lot of these teachers do take the time and they sit there. And after going through college, they're like, you know what, let's do something different. Yeah. So we're happy to be a part of this to help you guys change that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's all you guys need to do. All you need to do is take a look and go to the link that's right below us right now and see what you're going to do. You're going to see two links on the page now, just to make sure. 
The top one takes you to their professional development page homepage that'll let you know about some of the things that are happening there and the things that you have access to. Go to the second link that says teacher appreciation. That'll take you directly to the content page where you can sign up and get your free year if you're a new teacher and your free six months if you're an existing teacher. Let's show them how we utilize resources and we make sure that we take time, those folks who are HBCU alum, and use this. And let's see what Stride has to offer. We're excited about it. We know you will be too. Darren, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the votes? No, I mean, just, you know, as a teacher myself, you know, and and um, understanding the need, um, and, and of course, with the, you know, the, the diversity that's needed in our teaching core across the country, you know, I know our HBCU teacher graduates are just uh, exactly what we need in our community. So I really encourage them and just glad to be doing this partnership with you all. All right. Well, folks, there you go again, Mr. Darren Reed, Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development Learning. We will be seeing you guys, and trust me, you'll be seeing more from their partnership with us as we move forward, always trying to do our best to make sure that we move forward with the community. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. I love my HBCU And boy, boy I love it, love it yeah. I love it, love it yeah. I love my HBCU And man I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. man. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab To see if my team won a lot If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth But if they won, keep tab uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Welcome to episode 419 inside the HBCU Sports Lab show and podcast that is covering the sporting HBCU diaspora. All things HBCU sports, but institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Kibalo along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live. KCH 230 AM Studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, multi-Hall of Famer, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. With that being said, Charles, how are you doing today? Doing well, Doc, doing well. Countdown time is close. We're getting close to the old MEAC Swag Challenge next weekend, so... Uh, football is upon us. Guys are in that second week of camp. Scrimmages are, are down. Uh, I tell you what, it's a fun time. It's an exciting time. Uh, we're right here on football season. You're a little, a little more than a little less a day away from being a week past your birthday. Are you feeling your age yet? Already, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you swing the clubs now. Your back just doesn't bounce back this fast as you already. <laughs> nice stuff. Nice stuff. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm doing I'm doing good, Doc. On the road in a much cooler place than Houston, Texas. But all is well. Like That's not bad. Life. That's not bad. That's right. It's 75 degrees where I'm at versus oh, the <laughs> The triple digit <laughs> temperatures in Houston, Texas, Everybody. but I'm all good. So it seems like your it seems like your rental car must have been working all right. Say again. Seems like your rental car worked all right this time. Yeah, my rental car worked this time, but I went with Hertz this time. So <laughs> <laughs> not not to throw names of shade out there. <laughs> so I see that's my you go to. You showed sure through it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go with that other company. It starts with an A. I ain't gonna say no name, but you can figure it out. <laughs> I see you were too happy with them. With that being said, let me go back to you, Charles, and let you start off with uh, what's hot this week, what's not, 
Yeah, let's take a look at it. Uh, let's start off with a little football. Benedict College and Virginia Union, they land in the Division II preseason top 25. Uh, Paul Rankin in the American Football Coaches Association Division II preseason rankings. Two HBCUs uh, are ranked in the top 25. The reigning SIAC champion, the Benedict Tigers, they come in in the 17th slot. Right behind them is the Virginia Union Panthers in the 18th slot. So uh, Benedict and Virginia Union both coming in in the preseason poll rankings 17 and 18. Nice. Both teams went to the playoffs last year. Benedict finishing the season, losing the playoffs 11 and 1. Uh, they do have one first place vote, I saw here. I see here. Uh, that's pretty fascinating. Kudos to them. Uh, obviously, they won the Black College Mid Major Division National Championship that we unveiled last year. Uh, right behind them was Virginia Union, as you talked about being 18 in its top 25. They finished last year 9 and 2. Also losing in the playoffs. Fascinating to see what's going on there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Shout out to Benedict College, Virginia Union University. SIAC and CIAA getting some love in the top 25 Division II polls. Good stuff, Charles. Let me go to you, Mike. What do you have on your mind? Well, there were there were there was another top 25 coaches poll out there. Uh, two a MEAC and a SWAC team represented in the X FCS top 25 coaches poll. Um, uh, care, care of a lot of sources. So, uh, reigning celebration bowl champion, North Carolina Central, ranked number 19, Florida AM. Those rattlers for anybody that may be producing this show and is quiet behind the scenes are ranked number 25 in the poll. So you got to do the Eagles are coming off their 10 and four record, their first MEAC title since what, 2016. Uh, and then route to their uh, black college national championship. Meanwhile, in their second season, SWAC uh, fam, you recorded a straight nine win season, finishing nine and two. What, what gets me out of both polls though, is who's not there from certain divisions. Um, so I'm sure maybe we'll have a chance to highlight that, but you're glad that those teams made it in, but and and that they're recognized. But what gives what gets me is a couple of teams that are not there. So, yeah, we might have to show that to the back end of the show and make sure you get a chance to kind of share your full on throttle thoughts in regards to who's not there. I think that would be great for discussion. As you said, number nineteen, North Carolina Central. Uh, they finished last season at ten and two, coming out of the MEAC. Uh, winning the Celebration Bowl and taking home the Black College National Championship for many uh, people out there. Obviously, they were our major division champion. At 25, you have FAMU finishing last season at 9-2. and two. Uh, We didn't talk about this in the Division II poll, coaches poll that came out, but we'll go back to that. You also have some teams up in that receiving votes. In this case, you have North Carolina a and You have Southern and Howard receiving votes on the FCS level. On a Division II level, you actually had Dewey State, Maryland, Tuskegee, as well as Morehouse receiving votes in terms of those top polls. So, again, it'll be interesting to get both of your thoughts in regards to who you see missing out of there, why, and those kind of things. But let's stick with some of your thoughts as the news come in this segment. We'll take go down that rabbit hole, if you would, and we'll say that for last to kind of get y'all up in the tether or maybe some of our lab listeners up there in that last segment. But let me go back to you, Charles. What else out there has you thinking a little bit in regards to the HBCU news that says, hey, let me pause on this this afternoon? Yeah, but I, well, I think this is a significant on news. Uh, Tennessee State President Dr. Glenn Glover. Uh, announces her retirement. Uh, during a Monday news conference on TSU's campus, Dr. Glover announced her tenure uh, will end at the conclusion of the 2024 spring semester. And this is a quote from Dr. Glover. Uh, Serving as president of Tennessee State University has been the honor of a lifetime. Words cannot express the emotions I have as I stand before you this morning. TSU prepared me for every accomplishment I have achieved throughout my career. This is where I got my start, where the seeds of excellence were sown for a young teenager from South Memphis who aspired to change the world. So uh, Dr. Glenda Glover is stepping down as president of Tennessee State University, my former dean of Charles F. Moore School of Business at Jackson State when I was in college. So, That's pretty good. You snuck, you snuck that in there. That was smooth. Like I don't have my cap or golf cap on, so I can't 
tip my cap, so I certainly will salute her. A job well done. But you would bring that in. You know what the talk is going to be now. Is this going to open the door for <laughs> Tennessee State <laughs> to come to the SWAC when we just talked about that last week? We can't yeah. get over it before a move happens for folks already ready to go on the deep end and saying, what does this mean? She doesn't leave for another year now. She has another year, so it's time. We've got enough time to go through that, so I'll let that settle down. Let me go back to you, Mike, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, what else is on your mind this week? As we're closing down, we're getting a little closer to the told me slugger to kick things off in that opening weekend with the MEAC SWAC Challenge featuring South Carolina State out of the MEAC, Jackson State out of the SWAC, or as folks like to say in the SWAC territory, SWAC MEAC Challenge, Jackson State kicking off against South Carolina State. Whichever way you have it, it doesn't matter. But what else is on your mind in regards to some of the news this week before we get to that? Yep. So Isaiah Burke is headed to Greece. It's a, uh, it's a pro deal with uh, Psycho from MiagSports.com. So there are about 450 Bears currently living in Greece. There's one more to add to the total now. Former Morgan State men's basketball guard Isaiah Burke has signed to play with A.E. Psycho Athens. So it's a Greek professional basketball club that's located in, I'm sorry, Chico, Greece and competes in the elite league. The athletics club is uh, Athletic E, uh, which is abbreviated AEPS, which means Athletic Union of uh, Chico. Uh, physique, uh, physico. Uh, that's that's a tongue twister, y'all. Burke uh, was a fan at uh, a fan favorite at Morgan, known for his toughness, lockdown defense, and hitting clutch baskets time and time again. Now he's ready to take the next step. He's ready to start his career in Greece, uh, and which, according to him, is a dream come true. So he's dealt with a lot of adversity through his career. One thing that uh, is, it'll make you make it or break you, but only the strong cells survive, uh, says Burke. Congratulations to this kid so on this opportunity. Gotcha. Good stuff. Good stuff there. Morgan State, getting it done. Basketball, yeah. professional career. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let me go back to you, Charles. What else you got? Yeah, let me stay with basketball. Coach Don Thornton at UAPB. Uh, uh, the, the Lady Lions over there, a uh, nice – off-season splash is the Arkansas Pine Bluff women's basketball team. Uh, they went out and got former two-time Division One Conference Player of the Year, Stark Jacobs, uh, in the transfer portal. Uh, while playing at UT Arlington, uh, Jacobs played two seasons with the team and winning Conference Player of the Year award each season. So uh, she averaged 18.1 points and 8.8 rebounds per game. Uh, this is a significant addition to uh, UABB. Uh, women's basketball team, especially when you talk about uh, players they already have on the roster in, in Zay Green and Maya Peak. So uh, this is a uh, pretty significant. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Don continues uh, to be able to recruit really well. It's just got to yeah. take a little bit of a break. It seems to keep a couple of folks healthy. You never know. Obviously, she played in that championship game, so really close in terms of cutting down the nets, getting it done. So it doesn't surprise me that she continues to put in the work. Good stuff. I like y'all staying in the basketball framework. So I'm going to do that as well. Jump out of here with some news of the day. I got two of them for you before we get in this break. Uh, might get your thoughts on a little bit of this. But you got Bonzi Wells. Moin Owen. Uh, he's leaving the job there uh, after he took over the job at Lemoyne Owen. And he's headed to a spot at Georgia Tech. Uh, not as a head coach, but uh, he'll be an assistant uh, who was a former trailblazer as you. Man, he got his chance at Lemoyne Owen. Uh, after two seasons, he did have an overall winning record, 34-22. and 22. Wells is accepting a new role as an assistant coach at Georgia Tech. Um, obviously, uh, new coach over there at Georgia Tech getting it done. It should be fascinating to see how things go out in that way as Damon Stoudemire, a teammate of his at the Trailblazers, so they come back together to work together to see what they can get from Georgia Tech. So it's kind of cool to see um, that opportunity. I hate to lose them from the HBC rounds over there in the IAC, uh, but fascinating. Former magician standout Jaquan Lawrence was selected to the inaugural HBC All-Star Game, was, was named 
SIAC Defensive Player of the Year under Wells. So Wells developed some talent under there. But more audience was building a program. It would be interesting to see in what direction do they go uh, in regards to that. Uh, any thoughts in regards to any component of that news with Bonzi Wells leaving? Uh, little boy on and heading over to Georgia Tech. Y'all remember him playing a little bit in the NBA? <laughs> yeah, he was a heck of, heck of a defensive player. So uh, Absolutely. that's a, a huge loss in terms of their coaching staff. But uh, uh, excited for him getting an opportunity to go uh, at, to Georgia Tech. Yeah, wish yeah. him well. He, he was a heck of a player in the league. You know, he was one of the ones you see him. Um, if you go to HBCU game day, or and I also saw it on a couple of the uh, social media sites, you'll see him with the patented. Well, it's not patented, but you see the headband. He was one of those who was famous for the headbands. And he played, he was a, you know, CB mentioned, he was a great, he was an outstanding defensive player, all around yeah. player supporting the team. But that headband is what you remember him for. A lot of times, it was very signature for Bonzi Wells. Talking about uh, basketball, getting back to the MEAG major division area of Norfolk State basketball goes two and one versus court, uh, the pros in Puerto Rico's. Uh, they continue to get it done at Norfolk State. Uh, Norfolk State's men's basketball team earns a 96 88 victory over LBP Red All Stars on Monday night at the Ruben Zahaya Smon. As Coliseum finishing two and one in the trio of exhibition games against pro competition in Puerto Rico, Tyrese Jenkins pushed the Spartans to a nearly wired win on Monday, knocking down four three pointers in a 20 point effort. Mari Thomas proves uh, his versatility as a scorer and a passer, recording 17 points and 18, eight assists, I should say, eight assists. Uh, Terrence Jones. And Jelani Darden added 14 points in each. The Spartans' only loss of the trip came on Saturday against LBP White's All-Stars, 72 to 61. They handled their own. Uh, they continue to get it done in many ways. I'm fascinated with this Norfolk State program. They always seem to keep a squad. On, um, it'll be fascinating to see under Coach Jones how they continue to build out that program. Any thoughts? in terms of this basketball love or how much basketball information is coming out at the start of things, usually we're buried in football. Is it too early for basketball for you all? Or, or do you like kind of making sure you mix in a little bit of this basketball news? I'm going to start with you, Charles. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out on it, but, you know, it's football season. So. It's football season, so I'm, I'm – <laughs> I'll be watching football. <laughs> yeah, you act like you you cheating on your diet there a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah, you know this. Mike, what about you? Come on, man. You know not to even ask me that question, man. It's football season. We we here with not appetites. We we talking about two a days. <laughs> we still we we so excited for football. We talking about two a days and what's going to be. Talking about interviews talk, on the sideline with players. Exactly. Who in it, who interviewing? What the conditions like on the field? <laughs> and no, nah, it's too early for basketball. Though. Come on. Well, we could talk about A and T football shifting to meet the new challenge in twenty twenty three as they move into the Colonial, uh, which is formerly. Uh, known as the Colonial the Coastal. With that, let's take our first break, get back on the other side, and see if we can bring you another great interview. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food like jerk chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. Tell them I'm hungry. This is Ryan Fulford. 
A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team if they wanna love yeah. and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention yes, as he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab. I wanted to get back into some of this football talk. We y'all talked a little bit too much basketball for me. Um, <laughs> I, I know you had to play some love there, but I'm kind of like Charles. Enough of that. I want to get in, into some breakout players this year. Let's start at FCS level. And you can uh, put in a couple of Division two if you really want to go that. But uh, let me start with you, Charles, in just in terms of what are a couple of the players uh, that you want to get a look at right now and why? Uh, as, as a player in particular, I think it's going to be a significant addition, uh, especially – uh, to this Purdy offense. This is a, a offense that was number one in rushing last year. But they actually have a couple of players that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, one is Caleb Johnson, running back that is uh, transferred in from Mississippi Valley State. Uh, bruising runner who can uh, run in between the tackles, can bounce outside. Uh, but he's a great addition uh, to this Purdy offense. And Brian Jenkins uh, from Alabama a and He's now over at Prairie View, and he's a mismatch. Uh, uh, issue, especially when you talk about a uh, player who can do a lot of things against uh, safeties and line up over him in the slot or, or linebackers that try to drop back in a zone, but he's he's a zone buster. Uh, so that's going to be a couple of nice additions to Prairie View's offense that I think are going to uh, have uh, breakout seasons. This, uh, and I say breakout because uh, that that's probably a misnomer because they're known, uh, but they're great additions, I think, to this Prairie View offense. And I think another one is J.D. Martin for Jackson State. Uh, J.D. Martin is an individual who he kind of got buried on the depth chart the past couple of seasons with Jackson State's uh, offense, but uh, he's a capable runner. Uh, probably had a couple of fumbles, and they probably buried him on the depth chart, but he's a guy who can run in between the tackles, who can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's another Swiss Army knife type guy. So uh, those are three players off the top of my head that I think are, are due for breakout years. I want to talk, stay with you, Charles, in regards to um, Prairie View down there. Uh, you named a couple of players in terms of what they're doing. Offensively, what do you see happening uh, with those type of players? Uh, obviously, they can focus on the run quite a bit, a lot, when they did that. But uh, with that being said, 
in in a way, with their with that offense, what do you see those two players being able to bring to the table? Balance. I think that's the that's the biggest thing. Uh, when you take a look at, uh, like I said, this team was number one in rushing last year in the SWAT. Uh, but you have a, a more mature Trazon Kyle. He adds another rushing element from the quarterback position. Uh, but they really have some toys they can play with in regards to the passing game. Uh, they got a couple of receivers that can beat you deep. And then Brian Jenkins is the, is the slash guy who works the middle of the field, who works a lot. And, you know, I just taking a look at what they do, that they're sort of under the radar, but I'm telling you, I think they really can make some noise. And then the biggest thing is they have a veteran offensive line. Uh, they have guys that have been there uh, two, three years now, and they played together. So if those guys stay healthy, they're going to make some noise in the West. We go to you, Mike, uh, from a perspective. Are there any other guys that you see in the SWAC that really have piqued your interest in terms of what's going on here that you want to look at? Yeah, so I'd like to take a look at um, – I think I mentioned this before. I wanna, I'm interested to see how Jeremy Musa performs. You got you got the Cadillac. You picked the big B top in the East. You know, what's your, you know, what's the reason? What's your excuse now? How are you going to do this year? I'm very curious to see how that's going to work. In addition, uh, CB mentioned Kayla Johnson. I've been interested in him ever since, you know, he came to PV. You know, they had Ahmad Antoine, who was a, who's a top runner in and of itself. How are they going to balance that to keep the same intensity and focus of the running game and yet blend in? This passing game, it it only makes for sense that, you know, you with Prairie View, you're gonna have to pick your poison, you know, you 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 know, with a more balanced attack with the six foot plus receivers who actually have go get it po- possibilities. So I'm interested to see how that works. Uh, the other one that that sparks my eyes is that uh, Texas Southern. Uh, and how Andrew Body will perform. He, you know, he yeah. he, kind of, he kind of fell off last year. Well, he he supposedly has some support, and you know he's got a couple of receivers. He's got you know the Michael Porter out of Desoto. He, you know they you don't know if they built up enough pieces to protect him, but I think you know he's going to do a lot better than he did in 2022. It's just how much better can he do? I don't did they did TSU build up that line? Did they build up that system around him such that he could uh, you know step to that next level? We all know he has the potential, but I'm interested to see how he does in 2023. In terms of Texas Southern University and body, uh, any concerns in regards to the injury, or do you feel uh, what you're hearing out there that he's returned, he's in good form? Obviously, his leadership characteristics in terms of him really getting that team to follow his leads is off the charts, uh, as most people. But any concern uh, from your perspective in terms of the body regarding the industry at the end of the year? Me no, I I don't see anything. Maybe if he lost a half a, you know, you know, you 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 see maybe has he lost half a step? I think he brings a lot of intangibles to that. He's been with the system. He knows. He sees what's coming in. He's truly the leader. But I think his intangibles and what he brings, I don't see where he he you know any de- depreciable loss that can affect his playing on the field that I've heard or seen. I'm not as close to the situation. So I can't speak as an expert, but just the intangibles that he brings, you know, makes TSU a, a formidable fool. Um, but I don't know of any depreciable things, you know, physically that would hold him down on the field that I've seen or heard. Going to you, Charles, in terms of family, a lot of people have them obviously coming out of the SWAC. Uh, they were picked number one in the East Division. What would you say would be the biggest concern you have with family? Um, even though they come in top 25, as you see in one coach's poll, um, much res- respect in terms of the expectations. Uh, but what gives you maybe some pause in Florida a and Or is there anything that gives you pause? Um, <clears throat> I think the element that has been missing from Florida A&M, uh, even the past two seasons, has been a rushing game. Uh, can they run the ball? Uh, yep. Because 
if it gets to a point where you can just pin your ears back and come after Jeremy Moose, it's, at some point that has to catch up. Uh, but the question becomes, uh, uh, for me, with regards to FAMU, is can they run the ball? Now, I understand they have some uh, great additions that have uh, come into the program, uh, but I, I think that's been sort of the, the the question mark for FAMU in terms of uh, getting over the hump with, with regards to Jackson State. Maybe that hump is not there anymore. Uh, so, you know, can can they actually take the next step? We get to see it uh, with regards to the Orange Blossom Classic, you know, whether uh, they are uh, that team, uh, if you will. They come in uh, with all the accolades. Jeremy Musa is the preseason SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. But, uh, again, without a running game, I, I question, you know, how, how far the team can go. Mike, I'm going to go to the West Division with you. Southern was selected to come out of there. Um, in terms of that division, any concerns you have with Southern in regards to uh, what is the biggest pause that you would say, hey, maybe not so fast for Southern as they're selected to get it done this year? Well, who's going to lead them? You know, who's going to um, who's going to who's going to man out? Who's going to captain that team? Who's going to be the quarterback? That's the first thing you're looking you're looking for right now. But um, the other thing is, you know, consistency, I guess. You, you've you heard about their commits. They they definitely have a a plethora of folks on the offensive side of the board. But you wonder, can, the, can that offense be consistent in times when it really counts? And they've always had questions at that quarterback position last year. I think they rotated two or three different quarterbacks. You really is it going to be one consistent quarterback this year? Because so goes the leadership on the offensive side of the ball. At quarterback, so goes the team. So that's the question that I have uh, for Southern. Man, both of y'all just mean people. You shouldn't worry about the Rattlers. They five Jaguars. That's going to be the Titans. They'll be playing twice this year, some people say. Yeah, I, that's what I heard. Contest, and then again, yep. in the championship. But there's a couple of other teams in the East, as well as the West, that said not so fast. That's what's going to be fascinating this season, at least in the SWAC, to see. Uh, we'll take this break and come back on the, top, on the other side and give you some things to look at in terms of the MEAC and the Independence. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this second break. You see, Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology, protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. We're never not working. Number 15? That's my rub. Ooh, nice. Never not working. Never, ever, never, ever not working. Welcome, everybody, to Juneau, Alaska. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head & Shoulders scalp shield technology. Stride K-12 powered schools are ready to put over 20 years of being a leader in online education to work for you. Dive into curriculum design for the online classroom. Team up with state certified teachers nice. trained in virtual instruction. Take control of your child's education journey. Discover the power of personalized learning with a leader experienced in preparing kids for a future they can be excited about. Take charge. Stride K-12. Enroll now for the fall. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, 
and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Impress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love that. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yessa yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab where we. Showed out a little bit for the SWAC. You told me what to watch out for, who some key players to look at. Went deep in there and gave some love to the Texas schools there, but also had your concerns or shared with me the concerns or questions I asked you with FAMU and Southern in regards to teams selected to come out of there. So I guess my first question before we get into players, I just got to ask this. North Carolina Central, uh, we see them as a top 25 team, highest ranked FCS HBCU program out there. Uh, players galore. You can talk about both of these players. Davis Richard was the offensive pre- preseason player of the year, North Carolina Central. Khalil Baker, defensive player of the year, North Carolina Central. Is there anybody that's going to be able to stop this train from North Carolina <laughs> Central? <laughs> Yeah. Many people would think they were maybe a year ahead of schedule, but now they're mm. on pace. Um, they got a lot of pieces coming back. Some people say they're pretty mm. hungry. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Mike. Is it, can anybody stop this train? We'll start in the MEAC, and if the way we're predicting, that means they'll be in the Celebration Bowl. Can somebody out of the sweat stop the curse, uh, for lack of better words, which means they would stop this train? What do you say, Mike? No. <laughs> no. Simple, <laughs> simple answer is no. And, uh, you, you you could say, well, who was the team that beat them last year? South Carolina. Yeah, I State. would like to hear that, but I was thinking maybe you would. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no analysis whatsoever. So on paper, no. <laughs> So I, not anybody that just stands out. You could go, well, last year, South Carolina State, I think, played them real tough as well. You could say, well, Howard has a puncher's chance. But, you know, I once had a puncher's chance against Amanda Holyfield. You know, so, <laughs> so no. Yeah, you look at who they have on uh, first-team offense, Latrell Collier, Devin Smith, uh, uh, Simpkins, Simpkins, the center is still even back. I mean, come on. They got pretty much their whole team back. And, you know, let's look at, you know, statistics. You know, they pretty much led, you know, most of the, the MEAC, yes, the six teams, statistically in 2022, and they haven't lost any of the major pieces. So, no, I don't see any team really pushing them for that spot coming out of the MEAC. Maybe I'm wrong. We, we told you about defensive player Bill Baker, but they got three other ones on the defensive side of the first team. That's not even getting into the second team offense where they have uh, three coming three. on the second team. On defensive side, they got three on that side as well. I mean, I, I know it's only six teams, but still, that's a yeah. lot of players between yeah. the first team. Six, the six teams, but it, six teams, if you count them up, I think two thirds <laughs> of their team is on all the all first team or all second team. That's still a lot. Hey, Charles, Lord. can you break? Hey, can you Lord. break this party? Do you have something to announce to the people? Is Central that good? Central is that good. I would love to break the party up, but I just don't see it. And we we talked about. A team that, that potentially has a puncher's chance being at Howard team. And that Howard does have some pieces uh, that, you know, intrigue me, especially when you talk about Quentin Williams coming back at quarterback position. Uh, then they got Jerry Hunter, a, a tough uh, running back as well. Got some nice pieces on offense, especially um, I got Brennan Brown, tight end. Uh, he's a pro, spot, pro prospect. Shout out to his dad up in Dallas, Marlon Brown, Jackson State product. Uh, but, uh, they got Casey Hawthorne as well, also first team on me. But whew, 
the gap from 50 to 21 is pretty large. And that's what North Carolina Central beat them last year, 50 to 21. In that game, Quentin Williams only went 10 of 20 uh, for 100 and some change, 105 yards. So, I, I, you know, to me, it, that, that's – it's a tall order to knock off North Carolina Central this year. They're they're loaded on offense. We get to talk about a passing game and a running game. Defense, they got guys, a so, uh, MIAC player of the year, got linebackers, got uh, air, got defensive linemen that everybody is fawning over. That is going to be a tall task to knock off North Carolina Central this year. I know uh, Joshua is somewhere just <laughs> tickled pink about this North Carolina Central team. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, let me ask this way. Uh, who is the second team to watch in the MEAC, Charles? Is it the Howard team that you spoke of? Or are you saying somebody else is going to sneak in there? I think Howard would be that team. I, I think uh, – and, and, I, and I guess, honestly, with the MEAC teams, I'm always looking for a team that can score some points uh, because they seem to be just uh, from – uh, uh, I guess a character standpoint, very defense oriented over there in the league, run the ball tough. But I'm always looking for that team that can put some points up. And like I said, I think with Quentin Williams coming back for Howard, and he got some things on the outside, got a running game, uh, got a nice tight end. Uh, Howard could be that team that can put some points up and can scare some defense. Jonathan Black, we want to to remind you all, Corey Fields is three and zero against North Carolina Central. He does that. Not- Shaq ain't there. When I asked you the second team, yeah, it's different now. Shaq gone. Mike, I asked you the second team. Second team, you kind of shook your head with how are you leaning to South Carolina State as uh, Black men is illustrating here, or are you going in a different direction? Nope. Uh, you got it right on the dot. I'm going with South Carolina State. Um, that that defense, you know, you got a couple of D linemen that look good. Patrick Godbold, Lawrence Richardson. Uh, um, so I, I think, and, and then I believe Howard has to go to Orangeburg, South Carolina, uh, this year as well. So I kind of look at that. That was the only other team. So I, I, I lean, I lean toward South Carolina State, those Bulldogs being the second team coming. Uh, if, you know, if there is such a thing, the gap is still big to me between them and, and Central and the Eagles, but I still, I think gap included, I, I put South Carolina State as number two. Good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Jeff Roberts is just crowning them already. Randy King saying when it comes to the <laughs> Carolina Central and everybody else. <laughs> Lonnie Charles said Jeff Roberts, freshman, but I think of his name. Uh, Wendell Davis says let, late, but he's present, so he's in here with Delaney. Uh, Chuck Hunt is in the building. How is an improved football program? But, that famous but, I don't see them beating North Carolina Central. The game is in D.C., I guess that's not enough for you all. And Morris says, no, you did put that down. Mike, when is Jenkins is in here checking us out, showing us some love. Chris Tucker is in here. Lonnie Shaw is talking his noise as usual. Silas Ed- Edward McMorris is doing you know. Stephen George, Deron Waters uh, is in the building. Lawrence D. White, LaShawn Harris, Ricky Burt. Uh, just giving some love out here for those. Uh, what else we got? Karen Griffin, Edwin D. Moore, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina High School Heritage Center. Update there in terms of the name. Harvey Parker is here showing us some love. Good stuff. Emma Price. With that said, let's switch over a little bit. Tennessee State, looking at our independents. Draylen Ellis, Tennessee State senior, t- 2021 second team all v- OVC. In 2020, he was OVC freshman of the year. Can he bring Tennessee State home in regards to getting them out of the middle of the pack, out of the bottom of what now is the partnership between the OVC and the Big South? Can Tennessee State take that next step? And if not get it done in the OVC Big South, can they at least come up with the winning season? Sticking with you, Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of Tennessee State, particularly looking at uh, Draylen Ellis? So, uh, the short answer is, can they have a winning record? I, there's a chance maybe they could finish um, just about 500. Um, you look at Draylen, Draylen, Draylen Ellis. 
Okay. But you look at where they are the last three years, data points. Finish middle of the pack, offensive, averaging 300, 314 yards per game. Okay. That's good by most standards, but the number one team was getting about five or 600 uh, yards. So that's about two, if I do my math, two to three yards per game difference. Uh, they finished second in the OVC in defense. So they got some pieces yeah. on the defensive front, but I don't know if they have enough offensively to go with the big hitters in the OVC. And if you look at, you know, who's who's expected to come up again, that's, you know, Southeast Missouri, Gardner-Webb, UT Martins. I don't know if they have enough offense to overcome those teams. And if you look, I think the preseason poll pretty much agrees with that. I see the middle of the pack. They have a chance of finishing over 500 where they normally finish middle of the pack, but not enough to make any noticeable splash of a difference between last year or 2021 and this year. Man, you tough. Uh, Charles, what is what are your thoughts of Tennessee State? You know, they got that matchup against Pine Bluff. They have Norfolk State coming from homecoming. Uh, g- give me give me some thoughts. Can Tennessee State get over the hump in regards? You know, Brandon King's in here listening, so he wants to know yeah. about his status up there in Nashville. No, I, I tell you what, Tennessee State, they play some, uh, some really good defense. And I'm curious to see, can we get back to the Tennessee State – uh, that I knew growing up. I mean, you're talking about uh, a defense that flew around all over the place, big offensive lineman up front, tough, hard-nosed running back. Jalen Rouse is a name that, that comes to mind in terms of uh, really told the mail for uh, Tennessee State this upcoming year. But, you know, can, can they make a dent in OBC? Uh, the data points, like Mike said, you know, to this point, no, it hasn't happened. But I, I'm curious to see if this is a team uh, that can really make some strides with regards to probably playing the way Eddie George wants them to play. And that's tough physical football. Uh, I tell you what, they they, they did a, a heck of a job last year against Jackson State. That game was really nip and tuck uh, going all the way into the fourth quarter until Jackson State made a couple plays in the fourth quarter. But defensively, I was very uh, surprised and, and, and really – took my hat off to them in terms of the way they played last year from a defensive standpoint. Uh, can they get some offense up and going and, and make some big plays? That's the question uh, in a tough conference. So I'm not sure. You know, the jury's still out on Tennessee State. It would be nice to see them, you know, back up in the upper echelon in terms of, of talking to, uh, uh, HBC football. Well, we take our last break, come back on the other side. I wanted to come back as we started the show off and uh, talk a little bit about about the poll rankings. Before we do that, to kind of start that off and close the segment, we'll go into the Colonial with North Carolina a and and Hampton. I know a lot of people are not really looking at Hampton. They were picked last in the Colonial, top 25. You had North Carolina a and receiving some votes. Uh, what are some um, things that you're looking for with North Carolina a and or Hampton? Is, can Hampton, uh, do they have some players that at least put them in position to get it done? Or is it all about a and in regards to their ability to navigate the first season in the Colonial, Charles? What do you say? Tough conference. Tough, tough conference. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can't be any more succinct. <laughs> to your that. point, they have five five teams in the top 25 that we, yeah. we focused on over uh, HBCUs with two teams in there. But the Colonial – uh, now known as the Coastal, I should say, formerly known as the Colonial. We'll do it that as everybody is doing that for Twitter uh, in terms of X, formerly known as uh, Twitter. Five teams in that top 25, to your point. And that's not to say they aren't going to be good teams, Hampton, North Carolina, and T, but my goodness, that conference is, <laughs> you said it, five, five teams in the top 25. So, you know, you, you either got to raise your program up to that level or it's going to be a long season. But, you know, I, I like what a and and Hampton have done in terms of stockpiling some talent, but that's a tough conference. What do you say Hampton is going to get done in terms of their HBC matchups? They got one against the SWAC against Grambling to open things up. Then they come back and play Norfolk State. They have Howard in terms of the value. HU, and then obviously they have the conference game a and What do you see Hampton able to get done in terms of the HBCU competition? 
Uh, when you take a look at Grambling and you take a look at Norfolk State, they're both coming off of down years. Uh, they are definite question marks going into this season. So, uh, obviously, I think Hampton has a, 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 a good punch of chance in terms of getting Ws against both of those teams. I think uh, with regards to the talent that they do have, they should get the W. But uh, Grambling and Norfolk State, I'm not sure if they will provide the challenge uh, to Hampton that you would think that uh, – uh, that teams of yesteryear, Norfolk State and Grambling, would have provided. Man, you know, Norfolk has a chance to really make a statement. They got Tennessee. They got all three independent. They got Hampton, they got a and and they got Tennessee State. That's an int- intrigued schedule for Norfolk State uh, when you talk about that. But what I wanted to ask you was about a and you, you frown it up. You sound like you're not happy about Norfolk State. Facing those teams there, I thought you'd be a little bit okay. Not yet. They're not quite ready for that. <laughs> what about A&T in that schedule? Can they get it? Can they surprise the world against North Carolina Central? They do have them at home in that second game. Oh, A&T that's a rivalry. Games. That's a rivalry game. Any rivalry game can go either way. So uh, I think North Carolina Central, when you take a look at that win over them last year, that sent them into a different stratosphere. So it'd be curious to see what a t can do against Central. We talked about how a, a big a, a buzzsaw that this Central team is going to be this season. If a t comes out and knocks them off, that, you never know where that could catapult them going into the season. That's a good one. I like that. You got to keep your eye on that matchup. Just something about it. Rivalry games, uh, particularly early in the season, you just don't know. Mike, some of the same questions. I'm going to start with a t uh, That schedule, some players to watch. Uh, what are your thoughts? Or oh, you can uh, put in there in Hampton as well. Just want to know uh, some of your thoughts in terms of what the season we can expect from Hampton or a t Well, for Hampton, I, I don't think I don't see them changing much. You look at a team over the last two years that scores, you know, give or take 20 points a game, averages 320 uh, yards per game total offense. You know, and they're in a conference where the top four or five are topping out at about 460, 450 yards per game total offense. So offensively, power power. I don't know if they have enough to make a dent um, in the in, uh, in in the league. You bring North Carolina a t in there, and you look at where they did twenty two, and they're a order and magnitude better. So they have. They have a chance to finish in the middle of the division, even though four or five of those are in the preseason top 25. I think a uh, North Carolina A&T with the right pieces uh, can come in there and make a significant, a, a, a larger splash. Um, I, so we'll, so it, it, you know, time will tell. We'll see. Charles wouldn't bite on this. Norfolk State schedule having three independent Tennessee State. Hampton and A&T, your thoughts on that? So, yeah, I actually, <laughs> I actually like Norfolk State against Grambling because it depends on which Grambling. This ain't 1980s Grambling. This ain't the 90s Grambling. This is Grambling in the year our well, Lord. It's, it's Grambling against Hampton. I'm sorry. Clear that it's Grambling. Against, it's Grambling against Hampton in terms of that match. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. You're going in and out, so I, I missed part of that question. Sorry. No, I was saying it's Grambling against Hampton, but I was talking about Norfolk State playing all three. They play Hampton as well as a and and Tennessee State. And so I didn't so know which I, direction I, you were going. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to take the Charles, but I don't know if I'll bite on that. I, I like Norfolk State's chances. I I, I like uh, – I've, I've been a fan of their coach ever since he left Southern, so I, I like their chances. This year against the independents, with the exception of, um, you know what? I I I, I do like their chances in all three matchups. I I'll, I'll go ahead and just say that. <laughs> I like that. You go, Paul. He said, "No, I'm taking them off." With that, let's go into our last break. We'll come back on the other side. And give you some more thoughts Good about question. football. Good question. <laughs> And Ultrasoft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember they can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Sorry. 
Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. <laughs> Quick! The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your beard parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head up display. They're here. Hey, it's the field. Warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life. Because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. I press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention. This is Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike, wanted to get your thoughts. You were talking about the top 25 uh, in terms of some of those teams that were not in the top 25. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and get your clarity on that. Well, let me, you know, I'll start. Uh, let's start with the D2. So, you, you, you know, you know who, who we have in there. So <laughs> I guess the, the ones to me that were missing that stood out or others receiving uh, Bowie State um, and Tuskegee. Um, I mm. think I uh, uh, Tuskegee, I believe, had 16 votes. Bowie State, they had about 50 votes. And then if I look at some of the 25 top, you know, you look at Newberry in South Carolina, you look at Lenore Rhines uh, and Emporia, and you try to match up scale on scale, you wonder if Bowie State, you know, uh, should have been in that top 25 amongst some of those, you know, maybe even West Georgia. Uh, Bowie State had a tremendous, had a pretty good season. Got enough, garnered enough votes, obviously, and so I wondered, you know, how they would have fared, and and should they have been in the top twenty five? You could also kind of make a, ta a case for Tuskegee, which was not present as well. The other one, um, to me, that should have at least picked up some votes was Fort Valley. Um, they had a strong enough. We were talking about Fort Valley, if you recall, in twenty twenty two. For most of the season, I think a key loss at the end, but Fort Valley had a pretty strong season. We were talking about them as a possible contender, and you compare at least the last seven or eight teams that are in the preseason, you know, you at least would expect Fort Valley to garner some some votes, at least D2. And I guess, we'll, you know, we'll talk about D1 in a little bit. Those are just my initial thoughts when I was looking at this list for the D2 uh, preseason order, uh, preseason no, so, let, me go. let me go straight. Go ahead, Doc. Go ahead, Charles. No, I was just no, going to ask you, Mike. No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head on all of those things. I mean, I, I'm, um, Tuskegee especially was one that, that kind of um, raised my eyebrow to, to see them. 
I guess, close enough, but not uh, quite there. Uh, but all of these teams, uh, and, and this is going back to the SIC uh, media day, <laughs> uh, they all have very big chips on their shoulder. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting <laughs> watching them the first first month of the season because you hit the nail on the head. I mean, Tuskegee, Fort Valley, uh, I, even when I went and listened to uh, the CIAA uh, media day, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, you, you just kind of listen to a, a few teams and they kind of miffed that they're not, you know, that team anymore. And, and, and of course, this always happens every media day, but you know, you just sort of pay attention. No, like, I think you're right. I think it was a little <laughs> something more going on. I feel like I was going in one of those wood chippers going in there. It was a lot of chips floating around there. Uh, it was a few. You make a whole whole on. In regards to what looked up this, I think you got great points. I, I don't think uh, what normally goes on. There's a lot of folks that feel in a certain kind of way that they weren't getting yeah. the love that some other team or a team yeah. was getting. Yeah, boy, was feeling a certain kind of way. I was like, kind of listening <laughs> in, like, hmm, that, that sounded different. <laughs> <laughs> so keep your eye, keep your eye on Division Two. It could be intriguing. I'm going to stick with you, Charles. Yeah. Uh, let's go in regards to top 25. I know Mike brought this up, but I want to get you first. Any glaring looks in terms of teams not in the top 25 uh, from the FCS major division uh, perspective from your thoughts on it? Uh, I think it's tough. Uh, obviously, Jackson has 21 game uh, win streak. Uh, regular season win streak, uh, back to back swag champions, and then for them to go from basically top five team to receiving votes, that's tough. But I think it's fair. You know, that's a, that's a team that's had a lot of turnover. They get a chance to prove it next week. Uh, quite honestly, I, I think. Charles, uh, hmm. I agree with you, but they didn't get the receiving votes. They didn't I mean, get receiving usually, votes. Usually, oh, so. you might have a team a little bit low. You usually give them credit. You'd be like, all right, I don't think they're going to do it, but they've been here, so I'm going to put them up there. And then they fall out if they don't get it done. But not yeah. even put them up there. I think yeah. you're being kind of nice and respectful because you don't want people to think that you're over-pushing Jack State. But I'm going to let Mike uh, do his hey. part on this so you don't have to even go. Yeah. Not, no, my, my, I'll my, tell my, you. My granddad said it's hard, but it's fair. Hey, no, 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 <laughs> no. no. All right. No, like no. That. No, uh-uh. You, you got the, the the SWAT championship two years in a row. To be the champ, you got to be the champ. I don't care what, you know, the, yes, they've gone through change. All these teams have gone through changes. Mercer was the second or third team in their division, and they're seven and four and still made the top 25. Come on, Really? No, Jackson State should have at least at a minimum received a number. I'm not talking two or three, a number of votes in this consideration. You mean Howard got five and Jackson State couldn't get one? What Ooh. kind of math is this? I tell you what. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what. If I, I was, if I was Jackson State going into this Swag Me Act Challenge, oh, the chip that I would have on my shoulder oh. going into that game. I'm going to say oh. you talking about chips. Oh, 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 the tip that I would have on my shoulder going. You talking about showing no love? This team was in the top 25 last year. Jackson State was you. And they can't give one ball. And Howard? We talking Howard? Mm. Not, miss, not mm. Mississippi State Valley. We talking Howard? Howard got mm. five votes? I'm sorry. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, that'll do it for us. And give y'all some things to talk about. Appreciate all the lab listeners out here. And Mike and Charles get it going. Mike, stood up, stood up, said it loud with his chest. Thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Kaville, the dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop every. Tuesday and Thursday. We'll be back on Thursday to give you some more HBC talk of the week. We look forward to discuss the latest in the news. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-D-I-L. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-D-I-L on Twitter, 
Facebook, Instagram, inside the HBC Sports Lab one on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big, continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. Dismiss. <laughs>